Let's first look at the intra-entity inventory transfer. Intra-entity inventory transfer is the situation that the parent either sell its inventory to its subsidiary or it buys inventory from subsidiary. And then when we do consolidation, what we need to do is we, we need to eliminate the effect of any intra-entity transactions here. Uh, first, let's look at what do we do on the parent's book if there's a, any intra-entity inventory transfer. So first of all, the investment account. Uh, depending on the method the parent uses, the parent can either use the equity method, initial value method, or partial equity method. And then uh, the purpose of the equity method is to make the parent's balance under the equity method mirror the consolidated total net income attribute to control the interest. Uh, so we talked about this before. And depending whether it is a upstream intra-entity transfer or it's, if it is a downstream intra-entity transfer. So um, a downstream intra-entity intra inventory transfer is the parent transfer inventory, sell inventory to its subsidiary. And upstream intra-entity inventory transfer is subsidiary sell its inventory to the parent. So in the case of intra-entity, the downstream intra-entity inventory transfer, uh, we talked about this part before. This is what you should have already know. The investment account is the initial investment plus all of the subsequent income by the subsidiary minus all of the subsequent dividend by subsidiary minus all subsequent amortization. And then if the parent does not have 100% ownership of the subsidiary, we need to multiply it by the percentage of ownership. But here, the part in blue, that is something new when this intra-entity downstream inventory transfer. We need to take out all of the subsequent deferred intra-entity profit, meaning that those are the profit that is associated with the intra-entity inventory transfer uh, that hasn't been sold to a third party by the end of the year. So we need to take that part out because that part hasn't been realized yet. We can only, we can only uh, realize those part of the profit is only realized when the inventory is eventually sold to the outside party. And then we need to also add all of the subsequent reversal of deferred intra-entity profit. So inventory is a short-term asset and the assumption here is uh, it should be the turnover should be within one year or one operating cycle. So any inventory, uh, if the intra-entity profit is not recognized in the current year, the default assumption is it should be reversed in the next year. So we usually make this assumption here. If uh, in the subsequent year, we need to reverse any of the intra deferred intra-entity profit, uh, any of the intra-entity inventory transfer profit deferred in the previous year. Uh, and then if it is an upstream inventory transfer, uh, this part is still what, what we learned before. And then the only difference between this and the, this, the upstream and downstream situations here is now all subsequent deferred minus all subsequent deferred intra-entity profit and then plus all of the subsequent reversal of deferral of intra-entity profit. So this part should be, we're going to multiply it by the percentage of ownership versus in the previous situation, we are not multiplying it by the percentage percentage, which means that uh, we need to take into account 100% of that deferred profit. And then in the upstream situation, we need to take the percentage. And the reasoning here is if it is in a downstream intra-entity profit, the parent is recognizing 100% uh, of the intra-entity sale on its book. So if at the end of the financial reporting period, any of those inventory hasn't been sold by the subsidiary to any outside party, we need to 100% take out uh, that part of the profits that is recognized. Versus in an upstream situation, parent only recognize a percentage uh, of, so the profit is recognized on subsidiary's book and the parent only recognize a percentage of that. So 
uh, when we take that out, we only take out a percentage and that's enough. And then uh, the initial value method and partial equity method, that is in essentially the same as what we did before. So those are not affected by inter-entity inventory transfers. Basically, they are not affected by any of the inter-entity transfer. And then uh, let's look at the income accounts. So if the parent is using the equity method, the downstream situation, meaning the parent sell to the subsidiary, it is very similar as what we talked about uh, just now. So we need to take out the current period deferred intra-entity profit and add back all of the previous year periods deferred intra-entity profit. Uh, because the assumption, again, the sum, assumption here is any profit that is deferred in the previous year, those inventory should have been sold in the current year. So when we sell those, we can recognize it. We can recognize those profits. And then upstream inventory transfer, which is a subsidiary sending to the parent. So the difference here is this part, need, we need to put it by the percentage of ownership. And for initial value and partial equity method, those are essentially uh, the same as what we talked about, about before, which means that they are not affected by any of the inter-entity transactions. So here is a summary. Uh, basically, initial value and partial equity method we do the same as before. They are not affected by inter-entity transfers. For the equity method, depending on whether it is upstream or downstream, but the difference between those is for the downstream, we need to take out 100% of the current year inter-entity uh, inter profit that needs to be deferred. And we need to add back the previous year's deferral uh, versus upstream when we're going to multiply it by, percent, by the percentage of the parent's ownership. So uh, here, what we just talked talked about, those are the formulas. Um, and then let's look at an example. So if you go on Island, you should have see uh, uh, this handout, it is posted on Island. So please uh, do not look at the solution uh, for now and try to take uh, about 15 minutes, try to solve it on your own first. Uh, I'm going to go through the example with you here and then I will give you some time to think about it and try to work on it on your own. So the problem is we have two firms top firm is the parent and bottom, bottom firm is the subsidiary. And um, in the beginning of 2014, top acquired 80% of the voting stock of bottom for 400,000 in cash. The acquisition day fair value of the non controlled interest is 100,000. And we also know uh, we have database which has a difference between fair and book value and it has 20 years remaining useful life, which basically means that each year, how much is the amortization? 50,000 divided by 20 years. So each year, the amortization is 2.5 thousand. We also know that in the year 2014 and 2015, bottom reported the following income and dividend. So we know each year how much income bottom reported and how much dividend bottom re reported. There are 10,000 inter-entity receivable and payable exist as of December 31st, 2015. After the takeover, inter-entity inventory transfer between the two companies occur as follows. So inter-entity inventory transfer, basically in the year 2014, uh, let me just write a, right here. Uh, in the year 2014, the total sales 
of inventory. is 80,000. And then the cost associated with those intra-entity sales is 60,000. So the, no matter whether it is upstream or downstream, so the uh, profit which comes from this intra-entity sale, the profit for the seller is 20,000. And at the end of the year, the buyer has sold 60,000, which means that, oh, sorry. So at the end of the year, it is this number. The inventory remain, so the inventory remaining on the buyer's book is 16,000, which means that 64,000 has been sold. Uh, can you calculate how much is the profit associated with this remaining inventory? So the profit is 20,000 for 80,000 inventory. And then we have 16,000 remaining inventory which means that the profit is 4,000, right? So the profit associated with the 16,000 is 4,000. And then in the year 2015, the total intra-entity inventory transfer is 100,000. The cost associated with this inventory transfer is 70,000. So how much is the profit recognized that can be recognized by the center? of this inventory, no matter whether it's the parent or the subsidiary, how much is the profit? It's 60, uh, it's 30,000. And then at the end of the year, inventory remain is 20,000. So how much has been sold? 80,000 has been sold. What is the profit associated with this 20,000 intra entity? Uh, this 20,000 inventory which remain within the firm. So we know that the profit associated with 100 is 30. So the profit which is associated with 20,000 is how much of it? 6,000, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the situation of intra-entity transfer. And assume the following four situations. So we let's look at each of what uh, what the parent book would be under each of this situation. The first situation is if the entity transfer is downstream transfer. So meaning that all of all of this, those are the sending from the parent to the subsidiary. And then suppose the parent to use the equity method. The second situation is, suppose it is subsidiary sending to the parent, which is an upstream transfer. The parent uses the equity method. The third situation is, if it is downstream, the parent uses the initial value method. And the fourth is, if it is upstream, the parent uses the initial value method. So please take five minutes. Uh, the next page, so um, all of the places that has been uh, filled in those white, uh, so like those places that has been filled in, those are essentially the same. So what I want you to, to do is, I want you to take the information from the first page and try to fill in all of the highlighted uh, spaces. Um, so like those highlighted spaces uh, on this page. Please take five minutes, try to work on it on your own first. And you can pause your video for now. So uh, this is for the year, the end of 2015, which is two years. Uh, from the year of acquisition. 
let's first look at if the parent use the equity method. So if the parent is using the equity method, the dividend, uh, the dividend income should be zero, right? So those two places should be zero versus if the parent is using the initial value method, uh, there should be no equity in subsidiary income. So those two places should be zero. So those are easy to fill in. And then if the parent is using equity method and it, it is a downstream transfer, uh, equity in subsidiary earnings. So that is the current year, 2015 income, which is 70,000 minus amortization 2.5 thousand and then take 80%. And then because it is a downstream transfer, so we need to take out all of the deferred, all, we need to take out all of the current year deferred income. So which is 6,000. So we calculated here in the year 2015, there are 6,000 profits that hasn't been sold to any other third party yet. So this 6,000 should be deferred for the year 2015. And also we need to add back the previous 4,000. In the year 2014, we defer this 4,000. And then which means that in the year 2015, we need to, those inventory are supposed to have been sold in the year 2015 because those are short-term assets. Uh, so in the year 2015, we need to reverse them back. So this is why we need to add back 4,000 the reversal of the 2014 deferred profit. And we take out 6,000, which is deferral of the current year, 2015, uh, each entity profit that should be deferred. And then you are going to get 52,000. So you add any, everything on your income statement that will give you your net income which is 162,000. Your net income is carried over to your statement of retained earning. On your statement of retained earning, retained earning at the end of the year is your retained earning at the beginning of the year plus net income minus dividend. So that is 744,000. And then retained earning at the end of the year is carried over to your balance sheet. On your balance sheet investment account. So we have the initial investment 400,000 plus the first year net income and plus the second year net income minus the first year dividend minus the second year dividend. So investment account it is a cumulative account because this is in, in the year 2015 and we are starting from the year 2014. So we need to add all of the income up until the current year minus all of the dividend up until the current year. And then take out all of the amortization up until the current year, which means multiply it by two for the year 2014 and 2015. Uh, multiply by 80% because the parent has 80% ownership in the subsidiary. And because this is a downstream equity method downstream transfer, so in the first year, in the year 2014, we take out 4,000 intra-entity profit, deferred pro intra-entity profit. And this 4,000 is reversed in the second year, which is year 2015. And in the year 2015, there's some new intra-entity profit that needs to be deferred. So we take out 6,000 for the year 2015. So we're going to get 414,000. And then on the asset side, you add everything up. That will give you 1,514,000, your total asset. On the liability side, you add everything up. That will give you negative 1,514,000. So your asset should be equal to your liability. And um, this check is correct. So this is the first column. The second column, the parent is still using the equity method and 
The only difference is in the second situation, it is an upstream transfer. So in the situation of an upstream transfer, equity and subsidiary earnings, so still the 2015 net income minus the amortization. And the only difference here is we need to take out the current year deferred profit and add back the previous year's deferred profit. And then this needs to multiply by 80%. Because in this situation, in the upstream situation, profits are recognized on the subsidiary's book. So, uh, and then the parent only recognizes 80% of subsidiary's income. So we, we only take out 80% of that. And then this will give you the equity and subsidiary earnings of 52.4,000. Your net income will be 162.4 thousand. And then your net income is carried over to your statement of return earning. So your statement of return earning net income will be 162.4 thousand. What is the beginning uh, balance, beginning return earning on your statement of return earning if it is upstream transfer? So you know, thinking about what is the difference between upstream and downstream, it is only whether we take a percentage. So we either take 100% or 80% of this inter-entity deferred profit. And then in the previous year, uh, the only inter-entity deferred profit, because previous year is year 2014. So the only inter-entity deferred profit we recognize in that year is 4,000 inter-entity profit. So basically the difference between these two, 652,000, add back 4,000 multiplied by 20,000, 20%, right? So if it is an upstream situation, we are taking out, uh, we are taking out, so if it is a downstream situation in the year 2014, we're taking out 4,000 multiplied by 100% versus if it is an upstream situation, we're taking out 4,000 multiplied by 80%. So the upstream situation, it is actually, the net income is 4,000 multiplied by 20% more than the downstream situation. And then, so if the return earning at the beginning of the year is 652,000 for the downstream situation, then for the upstream situation, it should be 4,000 multiplied by 20% more. And then uh, this gives us the beginning return earning of 652.8 thousand. And then the ending return earning is going to be 745.2 thousand. And this number is carried over to your balance sheet. On your balance sheet, uh, investment account so investment account, it's almost the same as what we did here. The only difference is now, so in the first year we take out 4,000 and then we reverse it back on the set in the second year. And then we take out the second year. So the only difference is those intra-entity deferral of profits and reversal of profits, we should multiply them by the percentage of ownership. So this will give you 415.2 thousand. And then your total asset will add up to 1,515,000 and 200. Your total liability and shareholders equity will be the same and uh, the balance sheet should balance. And then let's look at the third column. Uh, this column is for the downstream situation if the parent is using the initial value method. And this is just essentially the same as what we did before. 
So uh, in this situation, instead of recognizing equity and subsidiary income, we recognize dividend income. And the dividend income for the year 2015 is Fifty thousand. So fifty thousand multiplied by eighty percent ownership that gives us forty thousand. And no matter whether it is upstream or downstream, the inter-entity transaction does not affect how much we recognize here. And your net income would be one hundred fifty thousand for both. And this is carried over to your statement of retained earning. On your statement of retained earning, uh, the beginning retained earning. So think about what is the difference between, um, between initial value method and the equity method. Under the initial value method, so this we already talked about it about it before, I'm just going to just, this is essentially what we did before. And we're just going to add a little bit piece of the interest asset transfer here. So under the initial value method, we recognize dividend as income versus under the initial value method, we recognize subsidiaries income as income. And we need, need to take out amortization. And when there's any interest transfer, we need to take out interest entity profit here. So let's start from what we have under the equity method. Under the equity method, uh, the beginning return earning is 652,000. And then if we are using the initial value method, any of the previous subsidiary income recognized should be taken out. So we need to take out 30,000, which is the net income in the 2014 of the subsidiary. And then take out amortization. So uh, in, under the equity method, um, we, 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 we need to recognize subsidiary's income minus amortization. So we need to take this part out. which is 4,000 that is taken out under the equity method. Uh, to reverse that, we need to add that back. So add back 4,000. And then under the initial value method, we need to recognize dividend as income. So basically the first year dividend is 20,000 multiplied by 80%. So this will give you 650,000 under the initial value method and no matter whether it is upstream or downstream, it will be the same. Uh, the ending return earning, if you add everything up here, that will give you 730,000. And your ending return earning is carried over to your balance sheet. On your balance sheet, if the parent is using the initial value method, the investment account should always be equal to the initial investment, which is 400,000. So your total assets at the end of uh, your total assets at the end of the year 2015 is 1.5 million. Your total liability and shareholders equity should be add up to the same number. So uh, that is all uh, about what do we do on the parents' book and the different situations? And then we're going to look at uh, the consolidation entries.